So today we are going to talk about the concentration or sustained investigation. So this video is examples of concentrations on the 3D design portfolio. So um, I'm going to start by showing you um, what the College Board is looking for and then we're going to look at some different portfolio examples. All right, so I'm going to read the slide to you um, because the text is probably super small. Um, so a concentration or sustained investigation is a body of related works describing an in-depth exploration of a particular artistic concern. And you're going to have to do 15 images this year. Um, and sometimes you will see the word concentration. Sometimes you will see the word sustained investigation. It actually means the same thing. It should reflect a process of investigation of a specific visual idea. So you need to have an idea and you need to think of a way that you can show it visually. It is not a variety of works that are um, solutions to class projects or a bunch of random works with different intent. They need to relate to each other. You should explore a personal central interest as intensively as possible. You are free to work with any idea in any medium as long as you are addressing 3D design issues in some way. The concentration should grow out of your idea and you should demonstrate growth and discovery through a number of works that are related conceptually. You will also have to present work um, that represents evidence of your thinking, your method of working, your processes, and your growth over time. So this is the first concentration example that I want to share, and this student's theme was teapots. So if you look very carefully at the different pieces here, you've got some detail shots, you've got some of the pieces, some are individual teapots, some are sets. This is the score that the student received in 2014. They received a four, and this is what they said um, about this portfolio. The collection of teapots created with various clay body re uh, results in a closely related series of similar sized forms. However, the broad range of approaches has diminished the student's voice. Some clear decision making is evident in the intentional selection of specific fabrication techniques and surface treatments for each vessel. Scale and proportion are explored in the pairing of teapots and cups. As a whole, the body and work demonstrates good technical competence. Growth is evident. The use, of the use of cultural references in developing vessel forms and surface decoration demonstrates some innovative thinking. So there are a few things that they did well, there are a few things that they could do better. And so overall, the student is performing at a good level, not an advanced level, but a good level, and they received a four. Maybe their topic was a little bit too broad. If they had narrowed it down a little bit, they might have gotten into that five score range. This is what the student said about their work in their written statement. The central idea for my concentration is teapots. I use different techniques and different bodies of clay to make a variety of unique teapots. I first became intrigued with teapots when I made a gunmetal teapot. I wanted to make a teapot that could function properly and was comfortable to use. For the pyramid set, I wanted to use a different technique. I used a method called hand building. I also used multi-level carving as seen in image 18. My imagery is based on Egyptian hieroglyphics. I wanted to create the teapot to represent what a pharaoh might use. I sculpted this piece not going for functionality, but to make the viewer intrigued by all the symmetry and design. As I began to explore sculpting teapots, I wanted to try different clay bodies. I used Raku on the wheel for the basic form, then removed it and began to sculpt it. What makes this piece unique is the taped off design and using positive and negative space as seen in the hole in the center of the teapot. These are two different techniques that I explored also when making teapots. I used two other different techniques in the porcelain piece. For the bamboo on the sides, I used slip inlay and for the Chinese symbols on the top, I used scraffito. All right, so that was the first portfolio and what the student said about it and what the score or reader said about it. This next portfolio is compelling and protective architecture. That is the student's theme. 
So take a second to look closely at these architecture models. Some of them are abstract, some of them are more um, practical and realistic. Note the figure um, in the black and white pictures to give you a sense of scale. All right, this student received a five in 2015. So this student has created a series of work that represent visually compelling public spaces. The student's consideration of public and private space is unmistakably and coherently integrated in every piece. There is convincing evidence of informed decision making and discovery with material use and exploration of occupied and unoccupied spaces. The work clearly demonstrates an original vision as well as innovative ideas and risk taking. Moving beyond straightforward public realm design, the student plans for opening up the periphery to invite public users inward. Each image shows a thorough understanding and effective application of 3D design principles. Repetitions and rhythms of lines and shapes move the viewer through space in an evocative way. Contrasting organic and inorganic shapes add variety in a compelling manner. The work is technically excellent, Simple materials are used effectively to express ideas, and the work clearly demonstrates expertise with construction skills and design. This student said that in their written statement um, that the central idea of their concentration was this. As practitioners of a truly inescapable art form, architects have a certain obligation to consider the ways in which a structure interacts with both its private and public users. With the work in this portfolio, I aim to reimagine existing designs being formulaic and site specific um, that are problematic in the way that they connect with the public. By adapting these designs, I intended to create spaces that would be both visually compelling and more approachable for the average user. Black triangular canopy and the dark shadows that mirror those same forms foster a sense of development, making the space feel more human in scale and more protective in form. Then they also said, I began this portfolio by designing each project to focus on a single straightforward public realm design principle. The project in images one through two considers the idea of permeability, which is a crucial, crucial facet of public space design. The structure, while solid and closed at the top, opens up towards the ground level to create a porous environment for its users. The project in images three through four deals with intimacy through scale and form. The black triangular canopy and the dark shadows that mirror those same forms foster a sense of envelopment, making the space feel more human in scale and more protective in form. The project in images five through six integrates public and private space in an office complex by breaking up the tower into smaller sections and allowing the public to permeate upper plazas. The mesh wiring adds physical context to these spaces, cover, or converting what is at once a large and menacing space into one that appears more human and inviting. The final um, two projects employ many of these design techniques to transform previously private or unusable places into welcome and opening public areas. They both use agglomerations of many small elements to engender humanistic qualities and diminish scale while opening up the periphery to invite public users inward. That's probably partially why the student received a five. Goodness gracious. All right, we're gonna stop here and I will talk about the next portfolios in my next video.